Hello and welcome to this Photo Speed YouTube video with me, Tim Jones. And today I have Julian Baird, our esteemed, um, one, of, one of our esteemed ambassadors, should I say. He's brought some prints in today. And we're going to talk about the prints and also talk about Julian's photography, but also about his lovely paper choices, yep. his printer as well. And any tips he's kind of picked up along the way of how to do things because as I normally say everything's a little bit different with photographers and we all do something slightly differently when printing as well so if you find something that works never touch it again basically <laughs> is the rule um, so if it's printing and you're getting the desired results then stick with it but before we do don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel and also sign up to the Photospeed newsletter on photospeed.com I'll put a little link below in the description as well for you so that's all the little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Let's dive into Julian's amazing prints on the table here. Now. <laughs> Hi Tim, how is Hello. it going? Yeah, not too bad. Good, it's good to be back. Yes, <laughs> nice it is. To see you. <laughs> it is good to be back here. Yep. Because you did a couple of videos on looking at editing and things. Yeah, we did. We? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that was really interesting. We finished it off as well. So yeah, it's nice to have a, a deeper look at some of the yeah, final I think results. It's, and we're not with Sam today, but um, we're just the two of us talking yeah. about some prints and we've gone for something a little bit different for you, throwing a bit of a curveball into it yeah, as we well. Have, because a bit of a new paper you normally have. print on it's either legacy gloss, platinum burrito, uh, or NST bright white are my mm. kind of go to papers. But I do like to kind of mix it up. I've got quite yeah. a you know a, a selection of papers. So quite often I just pick one just for just for fun. But this one, the the, the your new Matt Burrito, yeah. I've got it at home but I haven't used it yet. So it's really exciting to come here so, and actually we're going to get your first impressions first on impressions, it as well, yes. because yeah, throw him a little bit of a curveball because you use those four papers. Yeah. Um, is there a reason you have the four? Because I know some people usually whittle it down to about one or two. I, don't, I, I, I just like a bit of I like a bit of variety. You know, there's, there's, you know, I know people like to have you know they have a matte paper mm. and maybe a, a sort of gloss or a semi gloss paper, but I think there's enough uh, differences in say you know the the, the legacy gloss and the platinum burrito. And for me, uh, it depends on the on the photograph uh, and how I want that that print to look. So yeah, I'm quite happy to have four, mm -hmm. maybe five papers that, that I use um, just just for variety. And okay. uh, for me, printing's fun as well. So uh, I, I quite like to mm. to spice things up every now and again. Is there anything you look for, kind of in the image, that would make you choose a different paper? Or yeah, I think sometimes if we if we look at some of these images, I think this one here in, in mm. particular, this is this is uh, West Mill Tor. On, on Dartmoor and, and the thing for me in this photograph is, is the foreground here with, with the grasses. So I, I quite like a, a matte paper because I, I think the matte paper tends to bring out the texture mm. in, in the grasses mm. and, and, and really brings it out. Whereas a gloss paper, you've got a, bit, a, a slight bit more of a, of a reflection. I think that sometimes detracts a little bit yeah. from that. So uh, for these types of Dartmoor images, I, I quite like a, a, a matte, matte paper. I agree really because on I find on, especially something like the platinum brighter mm. or gloss art fiber and even legacy a little yeah. bit that little sheen that makes the paper absolutely beautiful oh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful paper yeah can sometimes it it switches the hierarchy in the yes. image possibly yes. um if that makes sense um so like these lovely grasses down here with all the detail on this mm. map print here really complement everything else yeah. but on a Perhaps, I'm saying this is yeah. <laughs> perhaps, you yeah. never know. Um, but it could bring the little kind of hill in the background here in these rocks as well, yeah. a little bit more for you, which is probably, it might be what you're looking for. But I think for you, it was kind of yeah. everything. That, that's quite a natural choice for me for, for, for a matte paper. This image here, this is this is of um, Bellstone here. This. I think I would imagine myself printing it on either. Mm. I'd probably print it on both and then and see yeah. what's what. I don't think there's a there's not necessarily a right or a wrong answer. I think it's just however you uh, you feel when you, when you have a look at them and you put them side by side. But I think this one would work quite well in the gloss. Mm. It doesn't. It's got the texture of the rocks, um, but it's less important about the the texture of the, of the grass in this one. So mm. yeah, I'd, be, I'd be, definitely be printing this off in, in both to see which one. Looks better. So, would you do little test prints for that? Yeah, or I would do actually. Yeah, like chop it up. For and... most of the papers that I've got, um, I've got A4, mm. so I tend to do the uh, the initial prints off, and I'll, I'll quite often maybe print that three or four times across those papers that I have, and then just put them side by side, 
uh, and then perhaps narrow it down to, to two and then make the big, make the mm. bigger prints from that uh, and make a final decision um, from there. Mm. But yeah, I think when you, sometimes I see them on the screen, some of them are, are definitely a more natural choice. Mm. That, that for me is a, a mat and I think, um, yeah, this other one here, probably for the, for similar reasons as well. This is this is the brother, this is East Mill mm. tour here. And, and for me, the focus of this picture is all about those foreground grasses yeah. and the way it's caught the lights, it's all that texture. Um, I think so, on a gloss or semi-gloss, yeah. the focus would be this it, yeah. here, doesn't it? Really, because um, that would... But equally, yeah. And if you look at that, uh, oh, wow. Great Links yeah. tour. That, I've, I've have printed this off in, in, in Platinum Green and it, and it works really nice. Mm. Not to say it doesn't look absolutely great in the, on the map. I think paper. it's definitely a, a matte print for yeah. me, anyway. But everyone's different. Everyone's different, yeah. I think Legacy will work quite well. Got yeah. a, a reason why I'm thinking Legacy is because of the lovely texture Legacy's got, but also the warmth as well. Yeah. Um, but Matt Breiter does, I think, a pretty good job. Uh, I don't know. What, what's your first impressions on it, anyway? Because I, I, I really, I really like. <laughs> we it. send Matt you a box and you haven't used it yet. Well, so. <laughs> there's, a sto there's a story about the weather. Weather gods have not been kind to me because uh, I was hoping to go out and capture a new image. Because when, when I get one of your new papers, mm. I always like to go out and into the landscape, yeah. and capture a new print image. Because there's something about getting a new image and then printing it off in a new paper. Because it's great, you know, I've got a nice back catalogue of mm. photographs and I can print all those off, but I like to have a new picture first when you get there. Yeah. yeah, so unfortunately, the weather gods have not been particularly kind to me, so it's it's on the list of things to do. So th yeah. this, this is the first time I've um, seen the map burrito, mm. uh, and I really like it. I, lo I love, the, love the feel of it as well. It's got a, a fantastic weight. But the way it's just handled, um, like I say, the, the, the textures of the, of the grasses in here. I would say this is quite a delicate image. I think yeah. with a... You don't want anything, you wouldn't want anything blocking in here. No. Because it would, well, you just wouldn't have any detail at all. And I think sometimes with certain cotton papers, I've got to be careful, yeah. <laughs> um, that it could happen in here with certain ones. Um, but that's one thing I've noticed about the Platinum Barita. It really just holds those shadow details, highlights really Yeah, because this is quite a contrasty image because you've, mm. got, you've got this, um, this actually a, a hill off to the side here. So this... It's a little bit more in shadow, but the sky is obviously brighter because the, the mm. sun's come up to so the tonal range. Uh, there's quite a lot, but it's really, you don't have any like really dark spots in here. You still see all the detail of, of the grass. So mm. compared from transforming it from digital into print, it's worked really well. Mm. Yeah, it just looks stunning, but it yeah. also holds the detail, especially in this one here yeah. as well. Um, we'll talk about, I've got something yeah. to say about that one as well, but I don't know what you, it kind of just, it holds the detail. Mm. Beautifully, but like you said, with the grasses down here and things. And I think just... it's the thing about also about about printing as well. Mm. I mean, this image looks great in the screen, but it's not really until you print it that you actually really start to pick up all the detail of of the of the grasses in here. And this is one of the main focal points of the, of this picture. Um, so printing is for me has really brought this kind of picture alive mm. more so than it will, will do. Ever you prefer do the slightly warmer papers, like the legacies and? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, most of the print uh, papers that I use are, are that type. Like mm. I said, I started using, I got uh, NST Bright White mm. uh, not recently, probably within the, the sort of last 12 months. Mm. But I like the way that that handles mm. pictures as well. I mean, I don't do a lot of black and white photography, um, but some of the black and white pictures yeah. are printed off in that. Because that high really white pop out. Mm. You know, I've got some uh, pictures of the beach in Iceland. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, yeah, it, really, it really helps rather than having that kind of slightly warmer. Mm. Um, I always think with your photography, it's, it's it's very interesting to look at of what you you focus on isn't the obvious. Yeah, which is, yeah, I mean is, it's is very that? it's very rarely actually the tour itself. Mm. Um, so if you, if you, this is probably a rare, this, this Great Links tour being such a big tour up in Dartmoor. Mm. Uh, you know that that is very much the the focal point of 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 this image. Whereas if you look at something like. West Mill tour. That's actually West Mill tour up mm. here. But for me, the real interesting bit is this: it's this foreground, uh, like I say, with the grass and the, and the shapes of the of the rocks. And I think it's the same on that one. They've got the pool of water. It's not actually the tour itself. Uh, uh, and again, this is all about the, the foreground. So for me, when I'm up photographing Dartmoor, it's about finding those interesting foreground subjects, um, which can be tricky when you've got a lot of rocks, yeah. a lot of granite. Um, so yeah, that's tends to the, the, the way I approach Dartmoor. Mm. I mean, Dartmoor's just that whole, mm. it's a whole world, isn't it? In a it, way, it's a whole it's world, kind yeah. Of yeah. Um, so much there, and it's, it's really nice you focus on really one, one 
place. I know Dartmoor's yeah. huge, but it's kind uh, of... Yeah, 365 <laughs> yeah. square miles, I think it is. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a small place. No. It's not like an intimate landscape, but it's you focus in on certain parts of it. I think that's... Yeah. It. This almost looks like the Glastonbury Tour or something. Yeah, it's kind yeah, of... So it's, it's, um, I can't remember how many check points are. Yeah. They're, they're, all, they're all scattered about. But for me, the interesting part of Dartmoor is, is when you get the, the light. Because, you know, these are just hunks of granite essentially mm. and, and when the when the weather's the, the light's flat and grey they're not as interesting but so I, I really try and seek out the light here so you, it really catches the, the contours and the, and the textures of, of the tours and that, for mm. me that's when they really come alive or, or actually when it catches uh, the grass and you get light mm. in the grass and stuff like that so it's a, it's a, it's a really interesting but quite frustrating place to photograph no, I don't know so. it's a... <laughs> and you haven't done the ponies no, I haven't done the ponies. No, no. What, what, wildlife's not necessarily my, no, uh, no. my, my strong point. Um, unfortunately, no, I can't do either. So landscape yeah. or wildlife. So I'm not gonna. But uh, yeah, no, I, I have. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be going home soon in that scene and trying out this uh, mm. uh, the Matt Burrito paper because it, it looks it looks really nice. It's, but it also has those lovely. I think anyway, mm. uh, it has these lovely cotton qualities. Mm. Like the the grass here is a slower shutter speed. Yeah, so I, it's I, kind I, of a bit blurry. Yeah, that was probably windy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's probably the one thing you don't necessarily see from from these pictures. But most of these were taken in the Howling Gale. Oh, yeah, that, that's a difficult. <laughs> and I always, I always try and um, prioritize the image, image quality. Mm. So I will favor shooting in slightly uh, lower ISOs of the camera. And yes, that does cause blurring in the in the grasses. But for me, that adds to the. To, oh, yeah, to, to the picture it, because it, it was hulling a gale up there. I mean, it was, mm. you're holding on to the. I mean, it tripod. completely adds to this one. Yeah. I think anyway. But, it, but it doesn't. It, it's not so blurry that you lose the idea that that's that's grass and that's mm. it. so it's just a bit of bit it's of movement in the tips and the of, of the grass. So I think that's yeah. Yeah, for, for me, it adds to adds to the picture. And the, yeah, I think sometimes you have to own, as long as you own these decisions. And, mm. um, it was it was conscientious that I knew that I would have that uh, in there. As long as you can say it now. Yeah, say it. No, of course I can. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, obviously, we printed these yeah. here today. These are on A3 Plus, by the way, if anyone's interested. Um, and we used, because you've a Canon Pro 300 at I home. I have indeed, Pro 300, yes. How have you found it? I think it's an excellent printer. Mm. Really, really good. Nice, mm. and, nice and easy to use. Um, I've got a fairly simple workflow when it comes to, to printing. Mm. Um, so I do all my editing in Lightroom. So if you want to see how some of that's done, we've obviously done that. Yeah, that, we've that done a video. full, how you go into Lightroom yep, and edit start fin- and yep. start to finish. Surprisingly, not a lot, I'm afraid to no, say, but I, yeah, <laughs> it's I, interesting. I, I, I like the, I'm very much a light touch mm. person. Um, not that I'm against editing, not, not, not by a long way, but you know, I just thought most of my pictures don't require too much, too much editing. The landscape speaks for itself. It's hopefully. all of you landscape. So oh, I speak to and have it's just like, what do you do? Oh, uh, I do most of it in camera. And how? But anyway, um, um, <laughs> so you know, I obviously have a, a a great view to work with. So it doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's mostly highlights and shadows. To be honest, mm. it's it's not overly complicated. It's not a lot. So I do most of my editing in in, in Lightroom, and then because I use Canon printers, mm-hmm. Pro Three Hundred, uh, I've done for for some time. Uh, I use Canon's professional print and layout software, yep, yep. I think that's the way. Yeah, great little. The current bit. product. I find the interface really easy. Yeah. I get my custom profiles from you guys. That's nice and easy. Mm-hmm. Upload those onto my computer and then select the paper type and, and, I, and I hit print. Um, and it does it does everything for me. So it's, it's not a complicated workflow. No, and that's why I quite like the I can think, stuff. I'm very used to it. I think that's, I always say to people, that's where mm. you really want to get to. You don't need to worry about uh, all these wonderful things you can read online about yeah. printing. I think the biggest thing is get some custom profiles made, yeah. get yourself a decent printer if you really want to produce mm-hmm. like fine art prints yeah. like Julian is here. And then really make sure you're okay with the software and print, click yeah. print. I mean, that's the holy grail, isn't it? Always just being able to click print and yeah. get results. And, and it's, it is relatively easy to get mm. good results these days it's, it's not yeah. particularly difficult even even if you didn't get the custom profiles which obviously i recommend that you do out out the box you can get really good prints um i think when i when i did the video for the, the pro mm. it's the first thing i did and the first image came out and it was absolutely lovely yeah um so you, you're squeezing that bit more out of it when you get the the custom profiles mm. um which are not difficult to do 
No, no, and we can help you with all yeah, that as yeah. well with us, um, our custom profiling service. I've done loads of videos on it, yeah. so um, we can do that. But I should, I probably should have said that the Canon Pro 300 is, um, it's a pro level printer with 10 inks, it's pigment based, um, and it goes up to A3 plus. Um, so you can produce beautiful prints up to that size. Um, if you wanted to go any bigger, then obviously you've got the Canon Pro yeah. 1000 and then 2100s, 4100s and all that kind of things. But it uses the same inks as all their bigger brothers, bigger yeah. sisters. So you can get really high level, pro level prints from yeah. the printer, I'd I, say. I, I've never had any concerns about quality no. ever. No, I've um, done expressions with, with that mm. printing on um, Canon printer. So yeah. yeah, I've got no, no qualms about that. The only niggle I have with it yeah. is the small inks. Yes. <laughs> That's the only niggle. Granted, yes. It'd be small nice if yeah. they put 26 mil inks yeah. in it, but they put 14. Yeah. But the price is comparable with equivalents yeah. of 26 mil. So you're changing the cartridge more often. However, yeah, you're not spending any more. It's, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's quite good on ink. But, well. I mean, yeah, it's quite good. I mean, I've mm. done loads and loads of prints before. Um, I have to start changing them out. So. <laughs> So any hurdles you found with printing? I know some people, especially when they move to matte papers yeah. from a luster or something, everything kind of, I think people, they look at the screen a bit too much yeah. when they're printing. And when the prints come out, they look a little bit duller on matte paper, which is natural. Don't panic yeah. if they do. It has a certain quality, doesn't it? Yeah. I, th I think, you know, the only time I've <laughs> noticed the difference with matte paper is I've set it up wrong and I've actually not selected the, the right paper type and it can look really bad if you do that. You can yeah. get away with a lot more with the gloss. Oh, the media gloss. type. You don't yeah. want to use photo ink on a matte paper. Yeah, so if you, if you get that wrong. <laughs> so yes, it, it does look at, um, it, yeah, it's just got that, that matte finish mm. rather, rather than dull. So you just got to make sure, it's not difficult, but make sure your settings are settings are right. I always mm. double check everything. But um, yeah, I, 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 I like the quality of, of matte paper. And I think, you know, that you, you normally draw into to the semi-gloss papers to start with. Mm. Um, but I think as, as, as I've developed my photography and, and printing journey, I'm gradually getting more and more drawn to the, the matte papers. And that's why I was particularly excited about, about this one and, and seeing what my, what my prints look it's like. It's just looking at the print, I think, isn't yeah. it? Especially when you're printing on matte, especially, because most people's screens have got a little gloss to them, yeah. haven't they, or sheen yeah. to them, especially apples. I mean, we've got an IMAX out over there and it's glinting away in front of me. Um, so that's a big thing. Stop comparing to a point. Yeah. To a point. But well, it's very different ways of looking at your mm. your image, doesn't it? With yeah. Completely different technologies as such as Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, you know. so you don't have to do any you don't really do any adjustments to allow for that or anything. It's just do a nice nope. edit on the screen. Do a nice edit and... on the screen. I've got, I mean I've I've got a calibrated monitor, so my, my brightness is turned quite far down, but I'm I'm very much used to that that brightness mm. level now. So Generally speaking, you know when it, when I, when I print out uh, an image, it does come out as it looks on the on the screen. Mm. Um, so I mean, it, it does, I've not got a particularly complicated no. workflow. I've taken a couple of small steps, calibrated the screen, turned the brightness down as part of that calibration process, get the custom profiles loaded on, and then I'm off to the off yeah. to the races after that. It, it it can be that simple, and it should be. I think. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't agonise over colour spaces no. and all that kind of stuff. You don't really, you need to be aware of it, but you don't yeah. really need to worry about it, yeah. I, th I think, anyway. I mean, there's other people that out there that might say you do, but I, for me, anyway, I don't think it's... Well, for me, printing's fun. It's yeah. a fun part. It's a fun part of photography, you know, when you're not getting blown about up in, yeah. up in Dartmoor, you know, you're back at home with a cup of coffee and you, this comes out in the printer. <laughs> in the warm. In the, in the warm, <laughs> and feel your fingers again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really magical. So, yeah, not just don't get too... Too stressed up in it. It's quite these days with, with the modern printers. It's quite easy to get good yeah. results um, quite quickly. Yeah, and always remember a print is completely different to a screen image yeah. and Instagram images or whatever social media stuff. Yeah. A print reads really. I mean, it's meant to be it's, held. It's better. It's, I mean, the paper adds so yeah. much as well. The paper is an editing tool in itself yeah. as well. Um, I suppose you find that between. Um, like platinum etching that has a slight texture yeah. to it and things. Um, would you think about printing any of these on platinum etching because of textures oh, or something yeah, within uh, the pictures? Yeah, I mean, they work yeah. fantastically on the matte variety, but yeah. I know sometimes um, you could add a little bit. I think 
yeah, I'll let, I'll let you go <laughs> because I could. I would say I, I was going to say I probably wouldn't do that one, but possibly something with a little bit more kind of. Yeah, with a bit more, bit more texture, because um, you know, got, got, mm. got all the, the rocks there. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, particularly when I, if I'm, I'm going to sell um, a print, I will, I will print it off now, mm. or all, all the papers to, to find okay. out and, yeah. and look at all the the qualities. Um, I, I don't mind doing multiple mm. multiple prints to find the, the paper that matches. Uh, and there's no one, there's no hard and fast rule that says you know this paper for for this type. No. Of, yeah, no. it's a question I get asked quite a lot. Oh, it's my number all, one. Yeah, gotta be. And Apart I, from dark prints. That's dark, my well, dark prints. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Monitor brightness. Yeah, that's yeah. Monitor just, brightness. brightness. And then um, what paper should I print this yeah. on? So that's why I always tend to say to people, you know, like get the, get the test packs. Yeah. So they're a great way of doing that. Yeah. Print off your favorite images, and then you'll soon be drawn to uh, mm. you know one or two of those those papers, yeah. and they're they're the ones to. to and also, get. if you've got a Canon printer, yeah, don't forget the professional printer layout software. But also the feature in there, the pattern print, yeah. yes. is yeah. valuable. I don't yeah. know what Canon should put it more prominent. I keep saying this, but they can never move the button. It's actually a really good bit of, yeah. bit of software. Yeah, it just does yeah. this little test print. For those of you who don't know, it just basically does a little test print, uh, like a contact sheet, basically, and varies the brightness and contrast. Yeah. And you just go, there's a B and a C number for brightness and contrast. And you go, I like that one, and just dial in the numbers, and off you go. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, they've printing, yeah, it has got a lot. I think hopefully a lot easier in a way. But yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I, th I think it has. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good place to finish there. But thank you to Julian ah, to my driving up today oh, and thank seeing you for us inviting all. Me. It's always good to come to HQ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So don't forget to subscribe to the Photo Speed YouTube channel. We release new videos every Thursday. And also don't forget that we have a free ebook, the Photo Speed Art of Printing, that you can download from the website. And also, don't forget to sign up to the Photospeed newsletter. I'll put a link below to allow you to do that. And on that note, I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.